2011 to order. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody that's coming to the council meeting tonight. And due to the space limitations over here, we're going to move to the Ritz. So just bear with us for a little bit. We need to. Uh, I need to have a motion to recess. For, we make it over 15 minutes. Recess to 7:15 to move to the Ritz. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Here. Um, again, I want to wake, welcome everybody to the council meeting. Um, we've got quite a list tonight, and uh, we have several signed up for public comment. Uh, usually, public comment is three minutes. And, and I'll ask you all to keep it to three minutes if you would. We certainly welcome everybody here. It's good to have a turnout like this. Um, I would ask that you know we keep it to a, a dull roar if possible. Um, I, I don't want to entertain yelling and screaming and, and profanity. So um, with that said, I guess we'll start with the first person on the list. Mr. Hartman. You want me to stand right here? Whatever you want to do. There's a mic down here if you'd like to use that. Okay. Okay, excuse me, just a minute. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. 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 I'm Don Avenberger, City Attorney. Uh, in the area! I'm, is this on? Testing. There you go. Now it is. I'm Don Avenberger, City Attorney. Uh, after the last council meeting, we had a directive from the council to uh, start enforcing the code more rigorously. Uh, the last week, we had city court. We discussed the issue with the city judge, and she said uh, she would welcome uh, further code enforcement if the police officers and the code enforcer wanted to uh, enforce the court the code more vigorously. So, as a result of that conversation, we have uh, issued a few tickets, I guess, this last week, according to Doug. And I don't know if that's what you're here for tonight. Uh, we welcome your comments and concerns. And that's kind of how we got here tonight. So you have some kind of idea what the previous history was. Okay? John, we need a timekeeper for me here. Okay, Mr. Hartman, I'm sorry. I think everybody can hear me from here. Yes, sir. Uh, one of the reasons I'm here, I'd like to see in the paper the names of the council members and how everybody voted and what the final vote was on all the resolutions. And also, uh, kind of generalize, about two years ago in Hutch, there was a bunch of people complaining about Bob's pawn shop, painting his pawn shop yellow and orange. He fixed it up, it was painted up, and some people didn't like the color. It was all the options. Well, that's fine. What if he lived in Missouri and painted it purple and silver or red and blue? They'd have considered that obnoxious. So my point is, I guess, one person's uh, idea of beauty is another one's uh, distraction. So I think we need to use a little tolerance here uh, just because some people want to spend more money on riding lawnmowers than I do on vehicles, I don't think they should be uh, looking down on me uh, because I drive used cars and fix them myself. And I guess that's about all i got to say. <laughs> Thank you. Next I have uh, Mr. Foos. My question was more for, for Joe Myers, and uh, I was told that you had said something in session last week that if uh, I didn't do something about my house, that you would go ahead and burn it down yourself. And I was wondering if that was true. That's not true. I don't know where you heard that. There was nobody else on the 
council that heard that. I heard that too. I heard it from someone else too. Did you or didn't you say that? I didn't say it. Well, I said it. Well, uh, Steve Blank, he said Gil, he Gil, say it. Gil. I hate to tell you, the purpose got the floor, please. Right at the moment. Thank you. If you didn't say that. No. Nobody else heard it. None of the other councilmen. Board of City Clerk.
Would you not have talked to him individually about what you expected from him? And do you believe as a council member representing this city that it's appropriate for you to say that? Because you are a representative of the people of this community. And when you are up there, you're not just representing yourself. So your opinion has to be a little bit more weighted in, is this really what this city wants? Am I representing what this city needs? Not what your personal opinion is. Well, during the meeting, we'll ask the question, but we hardly don't get any answer from it. Do you give him an opportunity to go and find that information and then answer? We don't do nothing. We just sit there and does, does nothing. Do you have a job description for him that tells him what exactly you're expecting? Because that's what he should be following, is a job description, not a personal opin opinion or a personal agenda. That's the whole point of what everybody's talking about. We want to see Stafford improve, but there are a lot of things that truly desire your focus, and if you want people to work on their houses and improving their property, then take a step forward on truly doing something about the city streets and things. Stop Huckleberry Finn in them and just covering them over and hoping that the decay doesn't show underneath. Work on getting the grants or doing whatever it takes to get this infrastructure up and going, and then maybe some of these other people might step forward and do a little more on their properties. There's a positive way to do things and there's a negative way. And I don't believe that man deserves to be treated that way. And if that's how you want to do it, then please step down.
Kim Freeman. Yes, I just want to say that uh, I live from paycheck to paycheck, and uh, we had a house fire a year or so ago, and we're doing all the work ourselves, and uh, it's just, it, sometimes it takes a lot of time. Sometimes people want things to look good and, and improve, but it takes some time and effort, and the... I work night shifts, and that also plays into it, you know. Sometimes I don't always feel like getting out and working my ass off. When I work my ass off at work, you know, and I, it takes time, and, you know, you just can't expect something to happen overnight. And, but I do want my property to look good. I want my house to look good, and I'm sure a lot of people do, but it, it takes time. Thank you. Thanks, Kim. Uh, Dwayne Westfall? Yeah, I've been in the Kenwood and the parking in your front yard. Why well, can't I live over here at Keith Hall, South Buffalo? We're getting ready to move over to my mother in law now on North Key, 121. It's curved there for driving in front, certain drive in front of the house. Now there's vegetation growing there. There is rock in there. Same way as the driveway, there's vegetation in it. Now my wife tried to stick around up and kill all that before I park there without getting a ticket. And another thing, over here over on the boat, I've got a Dodge pickup. I don't drive there every day. Once I'm off our on the street, it may sit there for three days before I move. Am I going to get a ticket for that? That's what I know. Want me to address that? <coughs> yes, please. <coughs> Technically, the way that ordinance says it's supposed to be hard surface, graveled otherwise. I think it's a pretty pathetic day if we have to start writing tickets where I know which driveway you're parked in because I know it's laid out as a driveway. Uh, you know, I would never think I would write that. And you're talking about where you park your pickup. Sometimes you park up over the curb down there. Is that right, Mr. Westfall? When you park your pickup, sometimes you park the wheels up over this curb. Yeah, well, yeah. I do. Yeah. And I don't have a problem with that either. That is a narrow street. I mean, that's a safety deal. You know, I mean, geez, the officers have to use a little common sense where right these two. Sometimes we've been forced into doing things I don't necessarily agree with, but I have to follow orders. They're running and they're licensed. 
and you people are trying to tell me where I can and cannot park. And that's my and that's part of my freedom to park wherever I want on my property.
Harmon and Ozell Julian. Mayor, before we move on, would you address that about what he said about the votes? How many people actually did vote for it? Yes, please. We, uh, do you have the minutes? Would you vote? We brought it up. Do you guys not have a copy of your minutes from your last meeting in front of you? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. How did that? Oh, okay. Four to zero vote. Four to zero? And there are only four present. There was four. Who was absent? It seemed like I was in that meeting and only two voted on. Counted as a yes vote if they don't vote. Yeah, no. Okay. Did you abstain from voting? No, they have to have half to our You've got to have a quorum, and that's not even a quorum. Right. Okay. And that means you have to have at least three, and they didn't have three. We had four there, sir. Well, but there may have been four there, but you still have to have three votes. If two didn't vote, that's not a quorum. Well, they've already, we've already addressed that, so we're not going to address it. There were no names, right? No one's going to know. There were no names. There were no names. No, there was only two names. Mr. and Mrs. Rebel, we're going to pay for that. Are they here? Yes, Brian. Did you folks want to speak? Yes, I do. Uh, first of all, we moved here in 92. 
Which one do you want? Right. What do you got for him? I'll take it. That's the law. service director and, and I've only been here just a few years but I wanted to say a little bit about the emergency service uh, I'm here tonight just to observe but but also I'm, I'm concerned with the emergency service because majority of our operation is volunteer uh, I would have one question I, I've been in administration for a quite quite a while quite a number of years with with three different organizations does the council have a code of ethics a code of ethics on how you will operate as a council person. Does it does it address professionalism? Yes, it does. It does. Well, I, I I don't think name calling is professional, and and you know it uh, it, it appears to me that, that we're not acting professional within the group, and and I think you know as a council. It's, it's just as important as it is to anybody that stands up here and talks to you to act professional. Uh, so I, I just kind of leave that as that. I, I think that's the, the core existence of any operation is, is, is how you're going to conduct yourself and your values and your ethics. But I just want to say a, a little bit about, I, I hold up the city of Stafford and the emergency service in Stafford as an example to the county commissioners because they are the most glaring good example in Stafford County. I can give you examples of, of what would not take place if we didn't have Doug Brown, Cheryl Blanton, and some of the others on duty, both EMS and fire. And, and actually, you know, your council, uh, I, I put them as an example up to the other city's councils because not the others don't operate exactly like that. And, you know, it, Fortunately, St. John has the full-time staff for the county in that city. Stafford doesn't. I could give you countless examples of, of critical patients that would have just laid on the ground wow. if it wasn't for city city work city workers that are, are staffing the unit. But 
But the same happens even, even with the virus. We, we get a great response. We had a, a fatality accident out on 281. And the two people that showed up in the ambulance, Doug and Cheryl. The firefighters, Jerry. We got, we got Larry Sanders. We got Bill Back. And not all cities are, are, are that giving, but the city of Stafford has been. And, you know, when, when all the people were there, it, w it was Dina that brought the water out to the workers. Because it was about as hot as it was yesterday. And so don't lose back. I, I, I think the city of Stafford has some really great things going for them. And, and I think as far as unity and staying together as one, uh, there are some big challenges for, for cities of size in Stafford. And uh, if you don't stand together, and, and, I, and I think it's okay for a council member to, or a councilwoman to come as, as a new person and, and want to see some changes, but you don't force change. And, and change needs to take place incrementally and, and it really needs to be what the folks want for change because that's who you represent. Thank you.
our water and wastewater plants, our towers. Uh, you know, two years ago in an ice storm, I've been out for 30 hours straight, me and my man, putting up power lines, putting up poles, no sleep, secondary was down, but was in people's yards, putting up secondaries, trying to get everybody back in electricity. I had a person come in my power plant and call me a stupid son of a bitch. And I never have forgotten that, and I never will. I've been called pathetic, I've been called a liar, I've been called a thief, my employees have been called liars and thieves, and I'm tired of the harassment. I appreciate working for the city of Stafford and the people of Stafford, and there are a lot of good people in this town. But I guess if, they, if I'm not doing my job or I don't know what I'm doing, I guess they can fire me. Thank you.
City Clerk Jessica told us that we need special permission from the City Council for her to produce checks outside for normal time. The checks we will be needing don't have the exact amount yet. They will be approximately 3,500 for exercise equipment, 2,000 for rubber chip mulch, the rest will be smaller amounts and we will pay for them directly. We will bring a copy of the invoice and a check to the city when we have the exact amount. Your help in this matter will save us about $400. Thank you. Can I write a check outside? Can I write a check So if you're only charging the out-of-pocket expense for a connection fee, 
drawings that I have, guys are out there just reading the meter, turning the meter on, and reading the electric meter, and, and setting it up. And, you know, that's all you're going to be able to charge for in most houses in town, unless you have a meter. So it's probably going to be more advantageous to stay the way they are with the uh, utility deposit.
want we want to tell the council what we discussed today. Yes, I grab the mic. I'm Philip Schultz, and I do a little flying around the area. I probably gave some of you flying rides at Christmas here a few years ago. And we've been looking at the airport out there. And the state has a great program. They pay 90% of any development or improvements that we do. And I presented the council a couple of weeks ago on a program that, that outlines it. And today we talked about uh, going ahead. We had an airport board meeting Saturday. And census was was to try to do something with the airport and the planning grant is the first stage and that is done by certified engineers at Topeka that work with the Kansas Department of Transportation the aviation division and they fund 95 percent of this study what they do is they look at the airport we have and whether we should improve it do away with it and move to a new location but they will take all the factors study those and come back with a plan and I guess I'm asking the council if they will go ahead and approve uh, this application for a planning grant it could be from it starts at twenty thousand dollars and it could go to fifty later on if we decide to make a new location for the airport but there's money left over in the funds from this fiscal year and there's a chance that we could get this 20,000 funded before August and then go ahead in September the next application process period and go ahead with the work for the airport and that would be a 9010 grant. And the, uh, study, I mean it could be up to 50,000 but they think if we do the study for the existing runway it would be around twenty thousand dollars and they would pay the state would pay ninety percent of that ninety five percent ninety five percent we'd pay a thousand dollars yeah and, and and they couldn't guarantee us that it would be twenty thousand dollars but he thinks around that price if we stay with the current field and we're going to have some doctors flying in in the future to do clinics and the runway and the shape it's in today is just not safe to uh, operate it it was kind of the consensus of the hospital, or excuse me, the uh, airport committee that, you know, they would like to see us proceed with this grant. Um, it's one of the better grants that we've seen in a long time. They're usually much more money than we would have to come up with. Yes? Are they talking about this uh, black coffin or whatever you want to call it? Is that what they're... Yes, we're limited. We have 2,550 foot now north and south. We're limited by US 50 on the south and the old 50 on the north. And our thoughts are with the engineering looking at it, is we put in a diagonal runway to the southwest, stay on the current 80 acres that the city owns. That would give us 3,000 foot of runway. And that'd be a little improvement over what we have. Would it still be grass or would it be? It would be asphalt. Asphalt or concrete. Concrete's pretty variable price now with high oil price. Maybe it'd be a 60 foot wide runway. And we can do it in stages. We could add lighting to another year. We could just get this done. And if that field drains, a lot of water across there. And with nothing against the doctors, but when they fly, they need the 2,500 feet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's hard. Hard. <laughs> well, I fly for a couple of oil companies, fortunately. But, uh, but it's, you know, some of you mentioned improvement in the community, and we have an airport, and uh, it's just nice to go ahead with it. It's, uh, it's not beyond repair, and as brand, it's a great program. And I fixed a lot of airports. Personally, I feel like it's, you know, it, it's an asset to us that we can build on, and uh, I guess the committee is asking the council if, if they would spend $1,000, maybe $2,000 towards this study to find out if we can make the grant work. And if they, if the grant itself is 90% that they would come up with, and we would have to come up with five, right? Correct, on the, on the airport study. Right. 
and we did not qualify for the federal. The FAA were too close to great family crowds, so we have to work with the state, and it's a better program for our stock here. And that's what you're asking for approval tonight, is, to is for the study? Pursue with this hiring the, uh, or putting the application to the KDOT, the Aviation Division, and they have a website. If you have any questions about this, it's all on there. That would be a, an application to them to start the process and present that to KDOT, and if they could fund that for us before September, like, we would be obligated to pay the 5%. Otherwise, it goes into the next fiscal year, 2012, which starts in August. I make the motion that we um, approve the study to proceed with the study. I second. I move second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you.
they don't have it ready. I was told in the beginning that it was going to be ready in November, maybe December, and then every time I've contacted them since then, I haven't had an answer on that. I've had an answer on the code book, but not on the model personnel policies. I want to suggest, uh, I had conversations with writing this ordinance this last week. I asked uh, the associate council uh, the status on code, on the code update, and he advised me that the person who is in charge of that in their department is on maternity leave, and we were number 15 on the list, so it's going to be a little time before that element of things happens. So, just so you don't get too impatient. Uh, they're understaffed right now. Uh, they have two attorneys full time, and the third one's on maternity leave. So they're, they're just about booked up. So. My other question has to do with the inventory that we received. Uh, can somebody tell me, out of all the items that are on our inventory list, how many of the things do we still owe for? Was the question how much do we and which ones do we still owe for? Yeah, the question is what all do we still owe for that's on the inventory list? I don't have this answer tonight, but I can get it. I can tell you a few of the items that we still owe for, which would be our asphalt zipper. Or, uh, can you tell me on that asphalt zipper, can you tell me what the plan for the city is with that? And, and what kind of money didn't we spend $90,000 buying that? We did spend $90,000 buying that, and we discussed this several meetings today on the plans board. Is it something that the city can get rid of? Not right now. Okay. Did you bring a list tonight of those things that I asked? Uh, after I got to thinking about that, a uh, request like that probably needs to be a council vote because it does involve quite a bit of time. Right, I was just wondering what are the things that we have that we're not using that we could could do away with or we could upgrade into something else. That's what my question was. Okay, I was asking you something to speak for last meeting. I thought you wanted the inventory of everything that we gave you to sell. No. Okay. But no, to answer your question, no, I don't have it right now. Okay, thank you. Would we as a city be more money ahead 
by getting rid of some of that and hiring people that know what they're doing, rather than us trying to do it not knowing. Matt, can I ask you a question? Is there employees of this city that know how to run that equipment? Yes, there is. She said the only time she'd seen it run was in front of her street. Is it, is it utilized in part of the process that you're talking about when you're slurring the streets? Is it something that takes the street, the asphalt down to a certain level to resurface it? What is the function of that piece the, of equipment? The function of that piece of equipment is to uh, bring the we, we, uh, cars up the asphalt. Most of our streets in this town are not asphalt, they're what they call chip seed. Mm -hmm. We don't have any true asphalt streets. The outside edges of these chip seal streets, everybody knows it's alligator bad, which that's all the cracks to the side, and we speed it up. This zipper we use to run along the edge to put new surface down, and then we come over and slow the seal. That's why I'm not in favor at this point to get rid of the zipper. If we can, uh, plans for the road, roads is to have the city of Stafford completely slurry, other than the breaking the concrete by next year. And then we can discuss getting rid of the zipper. Okay, when you say that, slurrying the streets and, and using this piece of equipment, how is that, uh, my question is, how well is that going to maintain the streets if the structure underneath is broken? And I'm not, I'm not knocking you. I just want to figure out how well this is going to work. And I do understand part of her question, the feasibility both ways. What if we get rid of it then, and, and then what do you do in the future? I'm wanting to know not only how do we handle it now, how are we planning long range to deal with decay that's going to happen with our streets, with the things. I, I see both sides. I understand what people out here are saying, and I get that you're trying to say something. I want to see that we're looking at it together, unified, and we're, we're talking unified plan. What I hear up there is you're getting mad, and he's feeling defensive, and I just want to see both sides to try to understand how are we developing the plan. Not how are we antagonistic, but how are we developing the plan. The... Uh the proper way to do the streets would be to hire shears to come in, mill them all up, but all new asphalt now. That is not feasible at all. The zipper, when we zip the edges, we cut about a 40 inch path. We lay down about a three inch inch mat of asphalt, cold, uh, cold mix is what we call it, and pack it down and, and it the streets, if we keep up the slurry seal, after we get over the whole town next year, I hope, if we keep up a maintenance program on the slurry seal, after next year we can say pick 10 roads looking worse, looking the worst, and then go back and slurry them and keep ahead of that. I mean, it used to be with sand and seal, and these streets are way beyond sand and seal. I mean, it just doesn't do any good. And the only other thing would be to hire shears come to come in, mill everything up, but down true asphalt streets or concrete streets, and there's no way that's feasible. So you're saying at least one more year you need that piece of equipment to be able to try to maintain these streets to any level that we can drive on right now, correct? Correct. That's my question. Thank you, Mrs. Clark. Is there a motion to adjourn? To adjourn. There's a motion and a second to adjourn. Before we vote, I would like to thank all of you folks for coming out tonight. I'd like to see this more often, quite honestly. We have a lot of a lot of issues in our town and, and we need to address them and we need to address them rationally and work together. Uh, you know, we ought to be concentrating on ways to bring people into town, industry for our town, and uh, I, I think with, with help from the community and, and guiding us in the direction that, that you folks want, I mean, it, that's the way this is supposed to work, you know. Uh, you have an elected official, 
and they have to listen to the, the citizens, and then you base your votes on the majority of what the people are telling you. You guys work for us. That's correct. And, you know, it, it, it's not easy doing this, and uh, we certainly would appreciate your input, and, and it doesn't have to be a meeting, you know, call us up. But I, I do like to see a turnout like this. This is, this is showing some interest, and I appreciate it. Girls first, Bill. I didn't bring this up uh, through your meeting, but Jessica is aware that uh, I'm the executive director for Main Street. And when it first came out that we were going to have to demolish the YD Opera House, I had many, many phone calls and people coming to my office to see if there wasn't a way to save that building. And I have contacted the gentleman that has been working on the pillars for the old Barber's National Bank. And from my conversation with him, he has done a lot of reconstruction of historical buildings. And this is an historical building. And I'm waiting for him to come in to do an inspection on the building to see what his thoughts are and maybe get an idea of what the cost would be. And then I've contacted Dixie. I've also contacted Dave, so he's aware of what we're working on. And if it can be saved, Dixie said she would help to try to get it on the historical register, which would help us to get grants. Now, some of the grants may have to be matching, but that's something that we are working on. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bill? It appears to me we haven't completed the agenda as I have like 17, 17 to 20 to cancel. Well, that's my fault. I have put a limit on the number of things that can be brought up during a council meeting. And, and I've asked the council members to keep it at three items and uh, a piece. And that's where we are. Okay. Well, can you give us an explanation why that is not that we're limited to three items? Well, running really long. <laughs> I mean, it was really hard to get through it um, in a timely manner, giving enough time to each item. I understand why, but I mean, is that the way it's going to be every kind of page, or is there limited to three items or what? For a while it will be. I, I'm new at this, and, and I'm not the best at running meetings. I'm, I'm trying to get better, yeah. and uh, it's, it was mostly for my sake. So, yeah, I you're can, you're that good job. so I can keep up. I'm a little slow. Yeah, you're that good job, but I just thought maybe, you know, if we, if we have more issues and they need, they need to be addressed, maybe you guys need to be there every week and be there every other week. Well, uh, there's been mention of that. Um, I, I think we need to be careful that we're not micromanaging the, the departments. That, that's going to put quite a lot of load on Jessica's department. Um, you know, if we get to a point where we have to do that, you know, we'll take a look at it. But, it's just merely a suggestion. Yeah. Well, just write me a ticket. Pardon? Just write me a ticket, what you said. Well, see, here's my concern. If you guys are going to leave out those subjects to talk about, how often are you going to repeat the same three subjects before you get what you want? We're working on that, too. So the next city council, you're not going to discuss these three subjects we just discussed. You're going to discuss something else. Yes, ma'am. Because if we keep repeating the same thing, nothing will ever get done. We'll be back in the same spot. I understand that. Like I said, I, I, this spot's new to me, and, and it's new to some folks on the council. And we're doing the best we can do. All in favor? Two turn. Any votes? Hey, that's what's up. We've already had a vote. I'm sorry, Dennis. I just thought you were standing so you could see me better. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. We, we can't. The only thing I was going to say is you need to pay attention people that you look at you to office. Don't go on your own little petty ideas. Pay attention to people. 
Thank you.